Hey guys, Garrett McLaughlin here. And in the exercise of the week this week, I wanna cover what's called great toe extension pails and rails. So you guys have seen me cover uh, pails and rails in the past. Um, it is a kind of a concept through functional range conditioning that helps us work on range of motion, uh, controlling that range of motion, strengthening throughout the range of motion in the end range of motion. So not just creating more flexibility and range of motion in those things, we're actually able to control it and be strong throughout it, which is the most important thing most people are missing. Now the big toe is one area. We wanna make sure we have enough extension of our toes because as we run, as we get to that late stance phase right before toe off, we're loading into the toes and then we're loading that, that plantar fascia, that wind last mechanism, and we're able to push off with power. If we're unable to get to toe extension, we're gonna to try to find somewhere else throughout the chain, whether that's the calf, the hamstring, um, hip, lower back sometimes, too much extension. We're gonna to try to compensate to some degree just to find a way to, to propel the body. So we need to make sure we have enough toe extension. Uh, if we also don't have toe extension, we typically can, can form some kind of bunions there. We can start to lose stability and go into the foot. Some people I say with limited toe extension shift out and they're more in the supinated position as that they have a really high arch and they're shifting and actually loading through the small toes, starting to develop either a neuroma, a second, third, fourth uh, metatarsal stress fracture. So making sure you have good big toe extension is important because the compensations are huge when you don't have it. It's one of the things that uh, a lot of us know when our hips are tight, we know where our hips are tight. No one's looking at the great toe uh, in the same way, right? We're kind of just throwing a shoe on and, and going, on our, going on with our day and our runs and everything like that. So really understanding how much range of motion you have at the toes, the big toe, how much neuromuscular control can be important. Now from an exercise standpoint in this drill, um, what we want to do is find something. You can see here I have this, it's a 25 pound plate. Um, I like this just because of the shape of it. I can put my big toe, and my small toes are on the ground, I'm putting my big toe up on, I'm still keeping the ball of the foot on the ground, so I'm in a position where I'm extending that big toe and working on the range of motion here. Small toes are down on the ground, ball of the foot is down, big toe is extended. I can try to elevate and shift forward, that's gonna increase the stretch into that big toe, right, and then from there, what I'm gonna to try to do is I'm gonna to try to find a stretch position at the big toe, keep the ball of the foot down, find stretch. I'm gonna hold that stretch for two minutes. So I'm just comfortably stretching into the big toe. Hold for two minutes into that stretch position. This is the whole pails and rails, right? Progressive, progressive angular isometric uh, versus regressive. One side of the joint contracting versus the other. Once I do that, I can actively try to drive and push that big toe down into the ground. So I found my stretch position. I'm holding, I'm feeling that stretch and that tightness in the toe. I'm gonna to actively try to push down into the ground. I'm gonna push down for 15 seconds, try to build an intensity, nothing crazy or unnecessary, just building and pushing that big toe down to the ground, get those muscles to contract in a lengthened position. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my foot back down. And from this position, I'm gonna to try to extend and lift. So I'm gonna extend, engaging the muscles at the front of the shin, front of the foot. I'm trying to actually lift my big toe off the surface. Now I'm engaging the opposite side of these muscles. I'm gonna hold that 15 seconds, build up intensity, really pull, try to get that toe off the ground. And then from there for the last 30, I'm gonna reestablish my stretch. And I'm gonna to try to sink deeper into that stretch and relax. So you can see the sequence there. It was two minutes of a passive stretch in the beginning, 15 seconds pushing down, 15 seconds actively pulling that big toe up, 30 seconds reestablishing a deeper stretch. If you do this properly, you should know you're deeper into the range of motion as you get to that second part of that, um, into that last 30 seconds or so. But this can be a fantastic drill. Figuring out however you need to start, right? Seeing what works best for you in terms of actually elevating the toe, right? You can use anything around your house. You can use a textbook, um, small piece of wood, anything. This one's gonna move a little bit on me. Whatever you need to find the right height so when you initially get into that stretch position, you're finding what works for you. Like this could actually be a good height as well. Obviously I have to hold it down with my other foot because it moves a little bit, but getting into toe extension, finding your stretch. I can feel that through the arch of the foot and the base of that big toe, two minute hold, holding that stretch position, pushing 
actively down into the ground, engaging that big toe as it's in a lengthened position. From here, I'm gonna let the foot settle back down. I'm gonna try to extend that big toe off the ground, trying to get more range of motion, more extension, but actively, 15 seconds, build up an intensity. And then for the last 30 seconds, I'm gonna reestablish extension passively, and I'm gonna get a little bit more motion. I don't wanna shift, I don't wanna cheat. One thing you'll, you'll, you could notice as you go through this drill is cheating if you don't have the motion, right? I'm pretty neutral right here. This is a good height for me. I don't, if I don't have the motion and I try to get it deeper, you might see this stuff happening, losing contact with the foot of the ground. I always wanna feel the ball of the foot down. Extension, don't roll away from that toe, right? We wanna stay right in, ball of the foot is down, base of the big toe is down and I'm shifting forward into that to get a stretch. So a pretty simple thing to do, right? It's not taxing. Uh, we're just working on the big toe and isolating that, but the, whole, the sequence is a two minute stretch, 15, minute, 15 second contraction, pushing the big toe down, 15 contra second contraction, pulling the big toe up, 30 seconds trying to go deeper into your stretch position. If done properly, that last 30 seconds, you should see an actual difference of range of motion as you sink into that. Um, this is something that you can do on a regular basis. Obviously that, that whole sequence takes three minutes to do. It's not quick, it's not easy. You're contracting, you're pushing strong, you're building up an intensity. It's more challenging than just doing a normal uh, stretch of the toe. Um, but having those active components in there, working on the nervous system, working on strengthening this range of motion. One thing we, we often see is we can improve range of motion all day, but unless we have strength and appreciation and awareness throughout that range of motion, our body's not gonna wanna go into that position unless it feels like it's, it's strong and it's controlled throughout it. So we wanna do drills like this when we have our pails and rails that works on not just opening up more range of motion, building strength, building neuromuscular control, and allowing us to control that range of motion firsthand. So here's a simple drill. Take a look at the big toe. How much motion do you have, right? We wanna be minimum 45 degrees, big, big toe 45 to 60 degrees or so of extension. Um, so you can just look down on the ground to see as you're in this position, how much toe range of motion do you have? You can see well above probably 50 degrees here, a little bit more. If you're someone that's down here and you cannot even lift that toe off the ground, you're getting um, just barely off the floor, toe range of motion is one of the most important things you should go after first. I see people all day long that have tightness in the hips, tightness in the spine um, in certain areas. If we see that in the toe and they're running, that's the first place we go, just because, just because that really negatively affects mechanics, changes, step rate, changes everything, changes step length, all of these different things, because um, people are trying to get away from, they're trying to find a way to get more motion, get more propulsion, because they're lacking it in the most important area, and that's the big toe. Um, so hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to comment below, questions, feedback, try it on yourself, test your big toe motion. I think you'll, that's one thing you should be aware of, so look at that, rather than strapping the, the feet in some shoes, right? See how much motion your toe has and toes, and if you're lacking, that's a key, key thing to address. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys, and I will talk to you soon.